the bell icon to turn on notifications. In this first section of the course, we're going to be focusing on cleaning data. And we've already discussed the reasons why it's so important to clean your data prior to putting it into a pivot table and analyzing it. So let's dive straight into the first skill we need to learn, and that is removing blank rows from our data set. Now, if you take a look at my data set on the screen, you can see that I have a number of blank rows in my data. And this is definitely something that can occur, particularly if you're importing your data set in from another system or maybe another spreadsheet or downloading it off the web. Now, why are blank rows a problem? Well, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, they make your data harder to read if you have these random blank rows running throughout it. And secondly, they're going to cause a little bit of an issue once you create your pivot table. And just to illustrate that point, I've quickly created a pivot table just based on the data how it is, so you can see how blank rows affect that pivot table. So if we jump across to sheet one, take a look here. Now we are jumping ahead a little bit. I haven't yet showed you how to create a pivot table, but the thing I want to draw your attention to here is at the bottom of our pivot table, we have an entry that says blank. And this entry just here is basically those blank rows that it's picking up from the original source data. So anything further that I do with this, maybe if I decide to create a chart, we're going to have this kind of blank field in there, not really doing anything or being particularly useful. It's just kind of getting in the way. So a much better idea is to remove those blank rows from your data prior to analyzing. Now, before we actually jump in and remove these blank rows, there is one thing I want to do first, and that is widen out some of these columns. As you can see, if we take a look at column A, the region is kind of cut off. There isn't enough room in that column to completely accommodate the text within it. And the same thing for some of these other columns. If you ever see these little hash marks or a fence as they're sometimes referred to, this just shows you that there isn't enough room in that cell to accommodate the values. So we want to deal with that straight away. And it's a very simple process. We just need to widen out these columns. Now we can auto fit the columns automatically to the values contained within each cell by selecting all of the columns. I'm just going to do that by hovering my mouse above column A until I get that little black arrow pointing downwards. Click and drag across all of the columns that you want to widen. And then all we need to do is take our mouse and we can hover over any of these column boundary lines. And you'll see when you hover over, you get that double headed arrow. Hover over any of them, double click your mouse, and it's going to widen out those columns to the widest item in the column. So now you can see that everything auto fits nicely into each column. Now that we've done that and our data is a little bit easier to read, we can now go in and remove these blank rows. Now my data set is a fairly large data set. So what I don't want to be doing is going through and removing them all manually. You might think the best way to do this is just to select the row, right click your mouse and select delete. Now you could do that. It is going to remove the blank row, but that's a fairly tedious process, particularly if you have a data set as large as mine. So we want to find a way to do this quickly. Fortunately, Excel has us covered on this. We can either select all of the columns by using that same technique that we used previously, or if you don't want to remove, say, this blank row just here that separates the title from the data, you could choose to select just the entire data range. And we can do that by clicking anywhere in the data and pressing the control A shortcut key to select all. Once we have everything selected, we want to go up to the home tab and all the way across to the editing group and click the drop down underneath find and select. And for this, we're going to use go to special. And what go to special is going to allow us to do is basically find all of the blanks in the selected cell range. So if we go through our options, you can see one of them there is blanks. So let's make sure we select that and click on OK. Now, if you have a fairly large data set like I do, that might take a couple of seconds, but take a look at what's happened. It has selected all of those blank rows. 
Now that I have them selected, I can simply go back up to the home ribbon, into the cells group, click the drop down underneath delete and say delete sheet rows. And like magic, in a couple of clicks, we've managed to remove all of those extraneous blank rows. Just to show you how that affects that pivot table, let's jump back to sheet one. And what I'm gonna do here is quickly refresh this pivot table. And you should see that where we have blank at the bottom, that's going to disappear. So I'm going to click refresh and refresh all and blank has now disappeared. So that is how you can quickly delete all blank rows in your data source. So now that we've removed all of the blank rows from our data set, the next thing we want to check for is duplicates. And if we find a duplicate, we want to remove it. Now, when it comes to duplicates, the way you do this really depends on the type of duplicate that you're looking for. For example, you can see if we take a look in the sales channel, so column D, you can see that we have the words online and offline repeated. So technically, these could be classed as duplicates. Now, do I want to remove this type of duplicate? No, I do not. In this case, I only want to remove a record if every single column is an exact duplicate of another column. And again, this is something that can sometimes happen, particularly if you're importing your data. Sometimes your files can get corrupted or maybe it just comes across with additional duplicated rows. So you want to make sure that you are checking for that because again, this can cause problems when you go to create your pivot table. So the duplicates I'm checking for are exact duplicates where every single piece of row information is technically duplicated. So we have two of the same record. Unfortunately, Excel has a remove duplicates utility that makes this extremely easy. So make sure that you're clicked somewhere within your data set up to the data tab. And for this, we want to go all the way across to the data tools group. And this is the icon that you're looking for just here, remove duplicates. And you can see in the screen tip what it says, delete duplicate rows from a sheet. You can pick which columns should be checked for duplicate information. So that last paragraph there is extremely important. So let's click the icon. And this is where we get a choice of all of the columns in our data set. And we can essentially define which ones we want to check for duplicates in. So if you were just interested in looking for duplicates in one particular column, you could deselect everything except the column or columns that you're interested in. Now, I want to check every single column because I'm looking for duplicated rows effectively where the data is exactly the same. I want to ensure that I have the my data has headers checkbox checked and click on OK. And it's as simple as that. And take a look at the message that I'm getting. So I can see here that Excel has found four duplicate values and it's removed them. So all I need to do now is click on OK and those duplicate rows have been removed. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.